Um, this talk is about stuff which is not quite complete, and there's a few holes, perhaps, and perhaps there might be questions about is it the best way of doing things. So um, I have sort of aimed at a, a fairly good knowledge of Drupal already. So um, feel free to stop me at any point, ask any questions. Um, I'm quite happy to be interrupted. So I'm James. I work for Code Enigma, and we have sweets. <laughs> so, uh, if you haven't already had your sweets, go and get some sweets. Um, I've been doing Drupal for five or six years, and um, I came from a print background originally, and I started out being a themer, and I've sort of progressed into development. Um, but I still am, you know, do quite a lot of theming from time to time. But I want to get rid of themers. <laughs> So, <coughs> starting out with who does what. So, depending on the size of the project, you might have far more people than this. So, I've just kept it down to perhaps a minimum. <coughs> Developer, fairly obvious, someone that writes some code, any custom code in the project. Site builder, put together modules, custom. <coughs> or otherwise, uh, contrib, um, configure them all to get your site working. When you get down to your custom theme, you suddenly need more than one role. Unlike other frameworks or ways of developing websites, um, in Drupal we've got this concept of a themer. So we don't just take designs and stick them in. Uh, we need a theme up. because the theme system is complex and there's quite a lot that has to be done at different levels. So some of its configuration, some of its files, some of its CSS, HTML, HP. It's often the case that <coughs> a themer is someone who's forced into learning PHP. That's the slide I put. We've got theme and design next to each other. But in reality, there's often a bit of a separation. We've got a designer who wants to design <coughs> really new fancy websites, and you've got a themer who knows the reality of making that in Drupal. And there's you know, a bit of a disconnect there. Right, short side. We haven't had a tree snow, no trees here. So if you've been to a Dries note at some stage in history, you've probably heard him talk about what he talked about in this blog, from, I think it's 2005, this, eliminating a developer. So the idea of Drupal being this configurable system, you put together things, um, or make some choices, and you build a website, which, is, which works. Actually, I think there's been talks you know, this weekend about how you can do that. You can create fantastic sites. No coding, just put things together, super. But in reality, especially if you're working on you know, quite unique websites, you can't really get rid of developers. <coughs> also, you need someone to write those tools in the first place anyway. So, don't think we can get rid of them. <coughs> but, thinking about Drupal being this configurable system that site builders can use to put together complicated sites, well, maybe we can get rid of the <laughs> You said the developer looks a bit happy on that. <laughs> so, how? How to get rid of the theme? So, start with your designer. Now, your designer needs to be a special <coughs> designer, different people have different concepts of what a web designer is, but I've always seen it as a web designer, as someone that designs websites and produces the front-end markup, you know, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but they know all those technologies really well. So they write fantastic HTML, and they really know what they're doing. So they're really up to date, they're using all the best current new technologies. <coughs> So, for example, 
pre-process is a really simple way of writing CSS. Um, they're really keen on performance. <coughs> they want their front end to be super fast on really sort of small devices that um, don't have much processing power. And they just use this any full stop. They just want to do the best. So that's your design. <coughs> now there was a comment about this talk the other day uh, saying that, yeah, <laughs> but then maybe if your designer isn't like that, Whoops. Get another designer. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of buzz with bingo. So, um, yeah, they love talking about all this sort of stuff. And you don't really, as a developer or a site builder, really need to know much about this stuff necessarily. But this is what your designer was thinking about and processes that they want to use. So I spoke to our designer about this and I said, so. You're know, doing front end stuff, what tools do you want to use? Yeah. Okay, so I don't want two of those. Um, but you know, there's, there's stuff out there, there's new techniques all the time, there's new problems uh, you know, in web design and new ways of solving things. So your fantastic designer understands that they're designing for a CMS, so they need to design a, a system. Um, they do that, and then they hand over all of that front end stuff site builder. All of that CSS and JavaScript that they've written, and they're straight into the theme, and then that HTML, that's the style guide. The site builder. So we pop over to developer now. Got to set up one or two things, so some coding things. So your developer, the required <coughs> code is a theme. So okay, so you do need to do some theme work but this is not work for a theme up. You might use a base theme. We've been experiment experimenting with base themes for <coughs> this. Uh, we've been using Aurora a little bit, and we used some of it, and yeah, we're not sure. Anyway, we might develop our own. Whatever, you end up with a simple kind of theme, and there's a few things that you need in it. So, um, I'll just nick the layout CSS from Start. Um, that's something to walk and start. And the bare minimum that we've added, um, we've, we've got a page.tpl, because this is how Drupal uh, likes to output the page.tpl, so that's what you find in the system. Um, system module. And we change it so it just outputs that. And then um, it's very difficult to get rid of the block system entirely when you're doing any kind of build. And your standard block template's got all this in. And it's very important mainly for the system main block, which contains content, your main content on your page. And you want to override that, and you want to just print its contents. So it's popping back. <coughs> so that's, we've got the block template file in there for this new Drupal suggestions. So that's our theme <coughs> and then in that you would put all your CSS and JavaScript etc that your super designers design. You're going to need a layout or two so this is more developer work because um, we're going to be using <coughs> and display suite and so we need to define some, some layouts for those. So you might create a custom, little custom module, um, and you might define um, somewhere finding these different layouts and things that you create. Um, here's, here's one, and it's our one column one, and it contains, yeah, just, just one variable. So there's a bit of a pattern there. A developer might have to help with a method of uh, switching off all the supplied CSS and JavaScript. Now, some base themes do that for you. You can uh, find at least uh, a handful of modules that might do stuff to the CSS. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything that actually does JavaScript switching off, but you've got people, uh, Alter CSS and Drupal Alter uh, JS, uh, JS Alter, CSS, CSS Alter, so you've got those. So you might need to do a bit of custom stuff, but the main thing is turn it off first, and then, add in what you need, a recurring theme. 
So now, okay, so developer set everything up, site builder comes in, a few required modules. So uh, these are what we're using at the moment, plus a few others as and when we need them, but for the basis, it's very sweet because that gives you control of your fields and your content types and quite a few other helpful things too. Uh, semantic views, because even though the, the newest version of views really gives you a lot of control over the market, you still need semantic views to have complete control. Um, so we're using panels and panels everywhere <coughs> together, panels for controlling all your, all your layout and panels everywhere for the layout at the page level. So basically, if you remember that page.tpl file where we're just printing out content, that's because we're allowing panels everywhere to take complete control <coughs> and push to everything that appears on the page. And semantic panels, which like semantic views, allows you to override the markup. Um, we, we've actually fought that and we've sort of added a few extra things. So our fourth version by default turns up all markup and then adds extra settings for regions, um, which semantic panels by itself doesn't do. So you can uh, control wrappers around regions. Are you happy with panels, by the way? So panels regions are you know, just like regions. Is your um, your patch to semantic panels online in the sandbox? Yes. So I put it in my sandbox, and um, so I'm on Mukjin Messenger, um, and I put it in the issue queue as well for semantic uh, panels as well. So, so um, if you haven't used the space suite before, um, it gives you this great reset of things and <coughs> start with your default field template being a full reset. So you see that just up there. That way you can um, start from scratch and then just wrap your fields as you need them to be wrapped. So for example, and here's a standard image field, um, at the moment uh, using that full reset you'll just get your image output like that which, if you can remember your standard Drupal, would normally be like that. So there's a huge difference. Um, if we go on to the expert template, that's where you can decide that, okay, these fields, uh, these images in this instance, yeah, we want to wrap them in uh, whatever, um, including um, if you've got a multiple uh, instance field, so you've got several images, you could wrap it in a an ordered list or, or something like that. Um, <coughs> very handy little thing here which helps you get rid of wrappers around views as well. Not to be missed. And this is uh, display suite settings for your actual content types. So your, your wrapper around your actual uh, node view mode. Um, you can just get that to be reset to nothing. In panels, um, this is uh, the variant for the actual uh, the page, so the panels everywhere. Uh, and obviously, you'll need a few more things in there if you do the tabs and messages, etc. Et um, so, this is where you go to decide what content you want to appear. Um, semantic panels gives you this kind of control. So, for example, um, that. That page title decided that we want to wrap it in the H1 and we're not adding any classes to it whatsoever. So basically your site builder just goes through and configures all of that. So what you would start with, that's just um, start using start, so that's just Drupal's default output, that's just one node. Um, Get that. Which <laughs> uh, I hope you're clapping all the people that have put all the effort into uh, all these modules. Uh, there's no effort on my part. Um, so you can see we're just actually you can see there is actually the um, the title there just above the image that's so not mapped in anything at the moment, and that actual um, that you've got the image and you've got the body field. So that's just not wrapped in anything at all. So just having a Sort of closer look in so you can see a bit better. Um, 
your designer has obviously given these HTML templates and says, I want this to be uh, wrapped in this. And so the uh, site builder can just go into those various config settings and change them. So obviously I'm not very good at this whole kind of snaps approach to CSS and I've just kind of put in a class called name, but um, you know, people, I don't need to know that, it's the designer who knows that and tells me what to do. So um, it was very easy to just add that in. And um, one other change that we made from semantic panels is just changing that, um, <laughs> they've got a drop down for choosing which wrapper and it was limited to a certain number. We just thought, actually we just want a, a text build. So great, so if there's new HTML elements that we don't know about yet <laughs> in HTML6, then well, yeah, we'll just pattern them, fine. So that might need to change. Um, <coughs> So this is something from a site that we have um, actually done this with. So a smallish site, but just very easy to get this kind of very clean, um, <coughs> non drupal markup output. And the great thing about it was that the designer just went away, designed the site, created the HTML uh, using fancy tools, um, created the CSS, using stats and things. Um, and just basically, stacks out the CSS, that got dumped into the theme, and then Drupal was configured to output exactly the same markup. So, really nice and easy. So, some rules that we followed, so, never write a template file, just avoid it. They've been written for you. So, these, these modules that we're using, they're fundamentally supplying all your templates, so you don't need to write a template file, except when you do, but, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just odd things, so, you know, you've got, you know, what do you do with, like, menus and, and things, so if you, if you hop back here, you'll find that we didn't bother sorting out, and we didn't want leaf in our, in our menu items, and we were a bit lazy and just kind of left it there, you know, because that was just, we couldn't do that in the, in the UI. So we just ignored it for now. Um, and always start by, you know, so that, that slide I showed you earlier on, which is no wrappers. Just start from scratch and then just build up as you need it through the UI. And then think carefully about the wrappers and, and how you want to add them. So do you want to add them uh, at the sort of content type level? Or is it better to add a wrapper around something when you actually place it in your panel? And then do you want to actually um, add the wrapper at the kind of node level panel or on the actual page panel? So think carefully about that kind of thing. Um, view modes as well is, is another thing actually. Um, it's, we just found it made sense for using views. Uh, make sure you set some view modes in your, in your content types so you don't have to <coughs> mess around with, with fields in the, in the views, uh, user interface if you don't have to. Um, not that there's nothing wrong with that, it's just it felt more consistent to use the view modes. <coughs> so, so why is this good? It gives designers freedom. So um, our designer has just loved the fact that he could just go away and use his fancy tools. Um, he's been using something called Hammer um, for, for Mac, so which allows you to write, write your HTML on little bits and pieces and then include it. So, very much like you would design little bits and pieces of HTML for a CMS, um, he works in that the same way, but without messing around with CMS, he uses this cool tool, he presses a button and a whole page appears and he posts it somewhere and people look at it and he gets it signed off and that's a lovely way of working for him. So, that makes things easy for site builders because they know that every time that they need to uh, make a change and make the markup appear a certain way, there's a consistent kind of pattern to it. They just um, go into the UI and, and make changes there, like when they build the site. Also, um, these things are very close to each other. So when you build your content site, you always end up on the managed display um, form anyway. So you're there, and at that point, oh yeah, yeah, I'll change the markup, rather than it being a task to do later by the FEMA uh, in a file somewhere. And if you've been doing Drupal for a little while, even a short while, you may have seen one or two coding models. 
And if you're not messing around in a team layer, if no one in your team is messing around in a team layer, if no one's pressured to make a quick fix in a hurry in a team layer, then um, you avoid that problem. And your team is smaller. You've got rid of someone. And we like unemployment. <laughs> Do we actually do this? <laughs> we keep the theme up. <coughs> because our, our designer really knows Drupal quite well anyway. So I kind of set up the system for him. And he goes away and designs it in his cool tools. And then sits there and puts the site together. Click, 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 click. Outputs the markup he wants. He's happy. We're happy. Done. That's that. Questions? Until we have big lake and we can export the configuration system usually, how do you manage kind of moving it from your dev site to staging to production without think, having to yeah. make a point and click? Okay, so how do you export it? I think all of it goes into features. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, display suite panels, views, everything, it can all go into features. So, yeah, that was an important thing to to do for us because it's all part of our deployment process, so yeah, yeah. all goes there. Just tracking where <coughs> the market's coming from, have you ever had problems there? Because you know, obviously you know where it's going to be, but you've yeah, got so where you've got panels, you've got um, just tracking things down like that. Yeah, so, so that was the thing about actually about thinking about where you put your wrappers in. Mm -hmm. So it's like throughout the whole process, it's add the minimum amount of markup where, you know, at every single stage. So when you're all sort of adding markup and adding fields, just what the minimum you need to do, try and avoid, because you can use things like field group or field collections, you can put things together and add wrappers around at that point, but maybe not your, it's not so flexible maybe later on when you need it in a different um, sort of format on a different page. So, yeah, we haven't got too lost yet. And just but we've, yeah, we've only done it on smaller sites yeah, yeah. so far, so. Get on the other approach, then yeah, we've got loads more market in there, but it's more robust in terms of say they add a new content type and now the <coughs> page is going to be handled. Whereas in this instance, obviously, you're going to have to step in. Now, that's probably not realistic for a lot of the size, but because you've not got templates there, um, because of the way you use the display suite, unless they clone the display blog as well, do you know what I mean? You're not, they can't just build a page and it will look okay. Yeah, so a lot depends on who is yeah. maintaining the site and looking after it, but if you think of most. Um, sites either done, pushed out, and then things like that aren't changed, or you've got maybe sort of bigger sites where you've got someone who does know uh, a bit of Drupal but is a site builder and they're maintaining that site, then that is then that we're kind of thinking of. So someone that possibly knows a bit of Drupal and then could add, you know, quite happy to add a view and then you know, just follow some simple instructions to kind of make the market work. About RDFA, because your method completely stripped it out. Sorry, RDFA. Um, yeah, I only stripped it out just because it looks clean. <laughs> <laughs> but all those but, uh, modules, they removed it as well. Yeah. So um, yeah. So you got to the, make that kind of decision. So also JavaScript as well. When you're stripping all of that out, you certainly can't stick in view slideshow and expect that to work. But then. Our thinking was actually any asset that you need, any JavaScript, any CSS, you really, in this day and age, really need to think about what you're sending out. You know, keeping your um, requests, HTTP requests, down to a minimum. And you know, do you need jQuery? You know, can we switch off jQuery and, and <coughs> not include that and everything? Um, so, so this is why I said at the beginning, this is you know, advanced. You've got to you've got to think about this. You've got to kind of know the problems that you're going to face, and yeah, so it might not work in every scenario. Have you looked at performance of display suite against kind of hard coding TPL files? No. I just, so I just heard some, I mean I use display suite, but I just heard some people so that's one of the criticisms that there could be some performance issues with it. But yeah, unfortunately, at the same time as this session, there was a caching session. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it would yeah, surely just, be cached. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't. I'd but you haven't run into any issues with that yet? 